Don't you know that from coast to coast where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope. Shush. Wait, is it lit? Uh, don't you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and doggy dogs. Yo, it's kind of crazy out here. We are here. At the Herbal Tea Podcast. At the Herbal Tea Podcast, doing stuff. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a crazy time right now in the world. Boy, boy is it ever. But the show must go on. It you know, must. What you gonna do? It is what it is. You um, gotta get the people what they want. Yeah, man. We are the Herbal Tea Podcast. It's your boy, Earth Tone. And your man, Peasy Peas. What's going on, people? How y'all been? What's up? What it is? What's the so, word? What it do? Social distancing enough? I know, man. Speaking of social distancing, you know what's good for a pandemic and times like these, like when you're stressed out and it's a lot of anxiety and, you know, know. people caught up in a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's right, a lot right. going on. What, what's good for that? <sighs> Miss Mary Jane herself. Mary Jane. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and get it going. Warm up. You know what I'm saying? We got to get warmed up. Well, I think we're about six feet apart. We're going to just say that we are because, you know, you guys are looking at us like, they ain't doing their social distancing. I mean, One of them might have it. It is what it is. Fuck not, the bullshit. Don't gas it. Don't gas it. Look, we're not going we to get into too much of that because we don't want to be Debbie Downers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. But we're going to get right into this music. Yeah. Who we got on the docket today? Who we got for the people? Hold on. First of all, first of all, before we even get into the music, let's just talk about the fact that it's my birthday show. Oh, shit. Niggas. Oh, shit. Almost forgot. My birthday was on the 1st of April. April's Fools. It was no joke for me. Peasy peasy. We are here. And guess what? So you could drink now. 21. Dripping. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we celebrate. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay. What you what you doing with this? You might as well. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Take a birthday here. Take a birthday. I'm gonna do a birthday here. Birthday, you deserve let's it. Get a pop in. Word, round of applause for Peasy, man. Happy birthday. Word up. Round of applause. Make that ass clap. Yo, we made it to April. We made it. Episode seven. Episode seven for you y'all. You think we would make it this far? Be honest. What'd you think? <sighs> I did. I always saw it. How about y'all? What do y'all think? Let us know. I don't know. Y'all probably don't even really give a fuck. They don't like, even y'all matter. Like, like, let's just get it going. What y'all think it is? You know what I mean? It's the We working through the Rona out here. We Everybody's here. coping, you know, the best way they see fit, the best way they can. Um, peace and prayers to everybody out there. Honestly, we hope everybody's safe. Um, everybody watching and listening, you know. Be safe. Take the social distancing seriously. Yeah. Um, don't stay healthy. Don't follow behind us. We not y'all. We y'all shouldn't be sharing blunts out there. Yeah. Um. But it is what it is. It's the Herbal Tea Podcast, and you know, clearly we not in our normal setting. Um. We couldn't shoot at our uh, ordinary Previous location, setting. of course, because it was shut down shut along down. with everything else that's not everything in life deemed essential. Pretty much. You know, but we still essential, so we out here. So we, we made it here. happen, and we're gonna bring y'all episode seven right on time. So. Right on time. Without further ado, mm-hmm. who we got on the list? Am I, am I am I bringing in the first one? I, I think you are bringing in the. You asking, I keep asking me? You. Yeah, why am I asking? It's you? basically you. All right, man. We this. got we got the homie T Kane. T Kane. What's up, T Kane? Shout out to T Kane. Shout out to him. Uh, Q plus artist number one, mm-hmm. episode seven, the Herbal Tea Podcast. Right, right, right. Um. I must say, there isn't too much information out there on T-Kane. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a running theme of the artists on the Herbal Tea Podcast. A lot of y'all Q Plus artists, y'all don't have a lot of info out there. At least a bio, the At basics. least a bio, man. So what I had to do, I reached out to the young boy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had his IG. So artist like, First, I emailed him because he was an artist submission. Mm-hmm. So thank you first and foremost for following and listening to us because it's clear that he watched the episodes. Yep, yep. He hit us up, the herbal.t.py email, Gmail, and he submitted his music. He sent us, uh, what was it? His whole project, which we're about project. to go through right now. Mm-hmm. So shout out to TK, man. But you got to update these profiles. You got to give me something on your IG. Give me a website. Give me a SoundCloud. It wasn't nothing on something. there. So I hit him up. I DM'd him. I'm like, bruh, give me, <laughs> give me. 
I need a bio. I need something. Give me a paragraph, something. a couple of sentences. Something, something. Something, something to go with. Where what you, you from? What you been? Who you, who your influence is? Why are you doing this music shit? Like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, like, who you, you got slept brothers with? and sisters? What's up? Yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So I hit him up, and he hit me back, and I got a little bit of info. All right, what you so, got for us? I found out he's from Atlanta, Atlanta-based beat maker. So gotcha. he's a Q Plus artist, uh, producer, beat maker. Um, he's inspired by jazz and sample-based hip hop. Gotcha. So that's kind of his bag. That's where he at. And you could definitely tell when you hear his music, when you listen to it, you can hear that influence in mm-hmm. it. Um, and he dropped his debut project, um, another instrumental album called Overcast, which gotcha. was in uh, 2018. Right, right. So shout right. out to TK, man. Um, shout out, shout out. Do you have any any? Like what? What are you? What's your familiarity with T Kane? Have you heard of him? Not T Pain. Don't don't no, get it twisted. Don't get that twisted. We got T Kane. T dot C A I N T K E. Or excuse me, ain't no E. Ain't I'm no E. Up. Ain't no E. See, so look at you. T dot C A I N. You already know what it is. But what do you, what do you think? What did you did you know anything about him or? I did not know. Anything? I did not know too much about him as well, and I'm glad he submitted, but. Mm-hmm. From what I was able to find. Okay. Fun fact. Oh, shit. You dug up a... F- See? That's why you the master. That's why you the master. You I know does this. Fun fact. He did a 30-day challenge back in November 2019 where he committed himself to making a beat a day. That's hard. 30-day beat challenge? A beat, 30-day beat challenge. And some of the songs that he... Uh, some of the beats that he made that he put on... Uh, on his Instagram, ended up on this album that we're about to talk about. Okay, interesting, interesting. Look at that. So, so that's a that's a a, a great a, segue a to the shits, right? Fact. Can we get what to a the Yeah. See? All right. So we got Sound Waves. That's mm-hmm. the name of this project by T Kane. Um, like we said, it's an instrumental project. He's a beat maker. Right. He dropped it on February first, uh, twenty twenty, of course. Right. Um, right. It's ten songs, twenty one minutes, forty seven seconds. It's a nice little lymph, not too long, nice little, you know, appetizer type joint. A little appetizer. Um, this is the second project out of his discography. Um, all right, man, I'm going to give it to you like this. Go ahead, give it to him. Lay it on me. I gave this shit aloud. <gasps> I gave it aloud, 62% Ooh. loud. Ooh. 62% Ooh. loud. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. All right, break so, it down, break it down. He got a lot of joints on here that I really fuck with. He got the Dragon Days joint. I think that was like the second or third joint. Mm-hmm. That joint come on. And it gave me it gave me kind of that New Jack Swing vibe, like that Teddy Riley little sprinkle of that on there. I don't know if that's one of his influences, but right. that beat gave me that vibe. All of the beats are a vibe. You could tell like sometimes when artists put out a project or like producers, and it's just a bunch of beats they had in the stash, and they mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm going to put these together. Boom, drop it. That's kind of like... I guess the difference between their mixtape and an album. Right. You could tell when they put beats together and like these beats are to tell a story. They trying to set a mood. Like this is specifically a mood. A beat. This ain't for somebody to get on it. And you yeah. could tell like these beats was made like that, which was dope. I appreciate that. Um, so he's a real producer. He's in his bag. The joint try was hard. It had that oh. sample. I don't know where that sample was from, but that joint was hard. That oh man, I, I, I go try. I can't even get the melody, but it was hard. That joint was hard. But my favorite, my absolute favorite on the whole project, it's a it's a tie actually. Nostalgia, sixty four. Facts. That facts. beat is hard. That's like, that's just one of those nineties like a mix between like a a, a Just Blaze. Ninth Wonder esque. Like he was giving me those kind of vibes with his joint. That Keep Going was definitely some Ninth Wonder joint. Those drums was very knife wonders. Um, facts, facts, But facts. that's kind of one of the setbacks I had about the project was the drums. Like, the sounds, mm-hmm. he picked a lot of basic, like, soft sound and drums. Like, he could he, he, he could work on that on the next project. Like, picking the drum sounds, he definitely could work on that. But as far as, like, his chops, whew, nasty. Nasty with it. The joint Mania, that last joint... That's that was probably like that was my next tie for the top one. I love nostalgia and then mania. Mania is crazy. I feel like that just gave me like if trap soul was a beat. Like that's like the definition of like mixing trap with soul. It's just 
He kind of killed that shit. So I gave him a loud, man. Shout out to him. This is a second project, up and coming artist, um, Q plus artist. I'm not sure what he identifies as, um, but he's clearly a Q plus artist. He shouted out, he mm-hmm. reached out to us. Um, and you know, he wanted his project review. So he got a loud from me. What do you think? What did you give it? I'm intrigued. I'm going through my playlist right now. I see you busy over. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get these songs that you name in. But the one that was tops for me was Fireflies. He made mm. I saw him make the beat. So that's another one of my asterisk. But I ain't get to it because I ain't wearing book my Right. Well, I mean, shit. Oh, you saw him make the beat back. for that one? I, he had the little Sam. That was one of his 30-day beats. I think that was uh, day, day 12. That's hard. So that was, the, and Keep Going was the other one that I mm. fucked with a lot. I mean, I could go through them all. Astral playing with Fire, the way he started it. Mania, the way you ended. Like, the way you started and the way you ended. If those are, like, memorable, then, then I feel like job. you did your job. At least half your job. Yeah. 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 For sure. Absolutely. Like, he did, his, he did his damn thing. Shout out to him. Um... He definitely gives me, like, bedroom producer. Like, you know what I'm saying? On YouTube, you have those channels that do the live streaming of, like, lo-fi beats that's, like, made for studying or meditating or yes. help to help you yes. go to sleep type yes. shit. Yes. Now, I'm saying that you should actually sleep on this cat. No. Don't sleep no, on but him. But it's a mood. It's but like, it is listen, definitely It's like when you go mood. to the playlist and they have moods, like, study yeah. music. Yeah. You know, Clean relaxation music, music yeah, cleaning music, you know like what I'm saying? Heat, Slap your baby mama music, some vibes, shit like that. It's over. Vibes. It's definitely a vibe. And I and I enjoyed the whole vibe. I gave this shit a, a loud as well. Seventy oh percent. Oh shit. Look at that. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. Open up episode seven with two louds. Look two at louds. That. Shout out to TK, man. Shout out to him. That's what's up. You did your damn thing. Okay. That's pretty dope. He did his thug fizzle. That is pretty dope. So your favorite joint was Fireflies? Fireflies was definitely my favorite. That was like, that probably was my third. And then I had Nostalgia, mm. 64, and then Mania was my other two. The ones like, that was really more loved. like gritty, gritty, um, hip, gritty, boom, bap, hip hop kind of sound. And I feel like this might be yours. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. make that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. The ones that was like bad. more floaty, a little bit more vibey, a little bit more melodic. I definitely was into Gravitated those. Gravitated towards them. Yeah, yeah. But hey, that. shout out to TK, man. Good job on that joint. He covered all of the bases. He was really definitely did. able to satisfy both of our picky asses. I'm saying. And that's just all instrumental. So nobody even spitting on these joints. So if you want to vibe out, listen to some instrumental, some good music from a dope Q plus up and coming artist, mm. go check him out, man. He's underscore what T Kane on. Instagram. On Instagram. C A I N. Right. Um, so man, thanks for submitting. Definitely. Again. Um, so that's T Kane. Um, so who we got up next, man? Oh boy. Yeah. Who, who we bringing up to the yeah. plate? Next up to the plate, we have the one and only da, 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 Azealia fucking oh, banks. Shit, A B. It's about to get spicy. The Sea Queen. Wow. The Ice Princess. I can't believe it. What can't we say about her? Oh, my God. All right. Let's, let's just start at the it. beginning. Let's I'm not even going to hold y'all. Let's just start at the beginning. Harlem-based rapper singer who rose to fame with her classic anthem, 212, and it's definitely a classic. Welcome you can put that on anytime. You know what I'm saying? Her chops on there. And Great right, breakout right hit. But, she, of course, she was is most memorable for that. Signed to XL Recordings after being discovered by Diplo. Dropped her EP, uh, 1991 in June 2012. Mm. Hold on for a second. Let me... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know somebody representing up in here. Um, right. And then dropped her album, Broke With Expensive Taste, in mm. 2014 as an indie artist. She was signed to a major label. She, she was signed to um, Universal. In the scope. Interscope. Yeah. Yeah, Interscope for 1991. You know, she got a big look off of that. You could tell by the videos. You could tell the difference with somebody signed and with somebody not signed. Yeah. She definitely. had the look. And then, of course, she went into her. She got a little, you know, beef with the label, went indie, dropped her album. And, you know, she is basically been holding on with singles, EPs, mixtapes, all basically throughout the decade. She has a hardcore fan base. I might be part of it. Mm-mm. I follow this. Does she hub. have a hive? What's the name of her hive? Uh, she does have a hive. She just named it. It was the Cunt Brigade. Oh shit! And <laughs> now I think it's some about Sea Queen something. Okay. Um, but she she does have a hive, and I I don't know. I'm not 
you know what? Fuck it. I'm part of the hive. Yeah, why not? And it mm-hmm. is what it is. I fucking love her. Like, yeah. I really do. Give I follow her on Instagram. I listen to all her shit. That's what's up. So she has this new fucking single. It's called Sal Chichong. All right, well, hold up. I actually have a couple fun facts. Oh, you know what I'm Do saying? Do you? I mean, I mean, it is Azalea. You Do you? I have a couple fun facts, actually. Let's go. We could go a few different ways. We're going to go. We're going mean, to battle. We're going to battle. With, well, you know she's known for her controversy, and I'm not one to get into all of that, uh-huh. but it was just interesting. The person who she had beef with, um, another ally who, you know, is we have to figure out what, what side of the table she lands on, but Cupcake. She had a feud with Cupcake on Twitter. Oh, she I didn't even know that. Me either. I just stumbled <laughs> upon and I'm looking up information on, you oh, know, I'm doing no. some research on Azalea. And I was like, oh shit. She tweeted. So Cupcake had tweeted a picture of herself and she was like in a lace top or something like that. And right, then right. Azalea Banks had something to say about it. So she tweets and she like, um, yo, you need to get some tits, ma. Like telling her to get her titties done, pretty much. And it was like <laughs> That kind of started it, but then they had a little tit for tat back and forth, and then Cupcake was tweeting, and she said she kind of called her, like, I'm going to be the bigger person. Let me have a conversation. She called her, and mm-hmm. then she tweeted after the conversation, like, yo, this bitch ain't there. Like, she kind of, she's out there. But she's she's had these run-ins with different celebrities here, and there, so it's nothing new, but it was just interesting right, right. Cupcake being, you know, one of the few people that she had a run-in with. So that was one fun fact. Damn, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but then on the artistic side, she's a big fan of um, Aaliyah, which I didn't know she was as big a fan of. She actually mm. dropped a project on Aaliyah's um, 33rd birthday. Um, I forgot the name of the project, but it was on SoundCloud. Right, right. Um, and she dropped it on Aaliyah's birthday, kind of, you know, to pay homage and all of that. So that's dope. I found out about her. But yeah, man, it's been, she's an interesting character. All right. I got some fun facts for y'all, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> you got more fun facts? Listen, there's a whole lot that you could say about she is a She is a walking fun fact. Well, let me hear something. All right. Well, the single itself, Sal Chichon, that she has, it, Sal Chichon in Spanish means big sausage. Mm. So um, she is talking about pussy, talking about dick, talking about sex. But as of March 10th, she says she has not had, had dick in 103 days, and that's as of March 10th of this year. So now that the coronavirus has set in, I guess I'm willing to bet that she might be going a little bit longer, Ooh. which kind of gives a little bit of a insight of, into the inspiration for this song. So it kind of makes sense. Okay. That's where her mind was at. That's kind of where her mind was. Okay. She is all over the place. She has her rants. And I listen to her rants, and sometimes they don't make sense. And sometimes she's drugged out, mm-hmm. and sometimes she makes a good point. But all in all, Sal Chichong as a record is her new single now, and we're going to talk about that. Okay. It is basically, well, she's gearing up for a new album. Um, a new album, I think she signed the E1 right now, and she's kind of getting herself ready for her new album, Business and Pleasure. She's been kind of talking about it. For she a been while on a hiatus now. for a minute, but I mean, she, it took her a while to drop her first album. Yeah. so I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, she's got her whole lot of business stuff that she's been working out and things like that. Just it's just her career is kind of messy, but you yeah. know, I'm gonna do my best to follow through or follow, you know, what a little bit give make sense of it a little bit. All right. Onyx, the producer of the record, she's he's featured on it. That shit threw me because I'm like, hold up, she got a joint with Onyx, like Onyx, Onyx. No, Onyx is the first. <laughs> <laughs> Onyx is just some Cali. Not pro- back the fuck up, Onyx. No, Onyx no, is just not the that Onyx. Onyx with I don't know if they spell it the same way. They definitely spell it. The they exact do same spell way. it the same way. Yes, so that's why I call me. I'm like, hold up. Boom. I didn't even realize that. But yeah. Onyx is actually just an L.A. based producer. He's got hits or got credits with Estelle, Asian Doll, Prince Royce, and Smoke Perp. Okay. So, you know, you can hear he probably mostly he does a here. lot of rap. Yeah, he out here. So he gave uh, a little bit of a Dembo banger, Sal Chichong. It came out February 28th, 2020. It coincides with Dominican Independence Day. Mm. And that's when she dropped it. She's got a kind of a little bit of a Dominican uh, vibe going on, which leads me to my next fun fact. La Araceli. Uh, you can see it on the cover of her mixtape. She's got a new persona, La Araceli, basically just a woman. That's kind of like a, a, a common name in 
Dominican culture or like in Hispanics in general, like you hear, like I knew somebody whose name was Araceli, but that's her new persona for the record. So she got a Spanish flavored alter ego. Oh, so this is going to be for the whole project. I don't know if it's going to be for the whole project, but it's definitely for this song. Okay. And basically Araceli just wants some dick. That's really what the All song right, is so about. What did, you, what did you give it? What's going on? I there? gave it a... What did I give it? What did you give it? I gave it a Reggie, 16 fucking percent. Yeah, let's get to the shits, man. What's up? What, what's up, man? What did you think of this joint? I thought Reggie, this song- 16? Yes, yeah, 16. Oh, shit. Considering that she put out- <laughs> Yeah, 16 percent. I'm not playing, because considering the fact that she's the same person that put out something like the 1991 EP, yeah. and her album broke with expensive taste, like she went hard lyrically. She goes hard lyrically, and she kind of sounds like she's like her, her Spanish alter ego. I understand mm. you want to try to mix that shit, but it's just the finesse that's not there. When she does the Spanish rap, it's cool. I like the bilingual shit, but she it's a way you gotta do it. It's not Ooh. not enough there. The beat is it's an average dembo beat. It's not really it's really low fi Super reggaeton. Like she wanted to do that's what she wanted. She wanted the low fi concept, but still kind of have like a high fi presence. I wasn't hitting, it wasn't doing it for me. And a lot of people are going off and she hyped this song up. On her Instagram so much, I was expecting a lot. Oh my God. Well, first, Jesus. she dropped this on what, the 28th of uh, February. February? Fam, I probably I probably took it a little easy on her because I gave it a mid. I gave it a 45%. You gave it a mid. mid? Yeah, I gave it a 45% mid. Because the song, like, it's, it's like mid grade reggaeton. Like, it's like it could fit right in there. Like, Right in with everything else. She ain't really saying nothing crazy. She mixing in like the English with the Spanish. When she's talking, like speaking Spanish, it sounds like she got too much marbles in her mouth. Like she gonna blah 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 blah. blah. That's what I'm like, yo, I can't. I'm like, I know I don't speak the language and I don't understand what you're saying anyway, but I know that you it sounds like you jumbling the Spanish. Like that don't sound right. Like she tried really hard. She like she looked up the words too many bars in and and trying to make it make Spanish and trying to be witty. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Ma. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't crazy about this one. But I gave it a mid, 45% mid, like on the, the you know, the low end of the mid, the mid scale. So Reginald James and a mid. All I mean, right, Azalea. Yeah. I mean, Azalea. yeah, hey, hey, hopefully the whole project will, you know, sound a lot don't better. Don't put this on business and pleasure. Better. Don't put it on there. Let that just be for the fans. I think we know she you just threw this out fans. as a filler. She's known for doing that. You know she'll she got a lot. Man, she, she got a lot of stuff that she like there's stuff that she be experimenting with. Her SoundCloud. It sounds like some experimental shit. Her SoundCloud is popping with a whole bunch of like exclusives that she be holding on to and then her, she dropped for her fans because her fans be wanting it. You keep this where that is. <laughs> she be like I'll be better off if you give me some dick. <laughs> yeah, no. like she be like jumbo jumbo jumbo, and then she'll say some English. I was like, I deserve it. Yeah, this ain't um, this ain't really the one. All right, so the girls could have it. The yeah. girls can have it. Well, there you have it. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, you got a Reginald James in a mid forty five percent from the Herbal Tea Podcast. And that's the whole Azalea Banks. That's the whole tea. All right. So who we got next on the list? We're done with Azealia. All right, all right, all right. Ah, uh, next on the docket, Q plus artist number three, Inwoye Carter. Now this is another artist submission we have. Facts. Um, oh, he was an artist submission too. Another artist submission. So we got oh, two for this show. This okay. is dope, though. This, this is, is what I appreciate because, like I said, the whole purpose behind the show is community based. Yeah. We want everybody who listening. We, you know, we definitely reaching out to the artists, the community based artist community and if you listen to music you're artist you make music yourself you want to mm-hmm. be submitted like we said reach out to us let us know we want to hear this music because it's hard finding you guys Yeah. and on top of that when we do finally find you even when you submit and show us yourself we still can't find no information so I couldn't find anything I ain't get an IG mm. I looked up I mean I'm surprised the music is at least on Spotify so the music is streaming I was able to find that um but I wasn't able to search him on Google. I couldn't find any profiles, no bio, no nothing. So I don't right. know where he's from, 
what he doing, who used to live up the block from him, how many fights he used to have, Nothing. how many boyfriends he had, Nothing. do he like boys, do he like girls. He definitely cute plus, but yeah. I don't know what's going on with Nwoye Carter, but we definitely going to check out this music. But before I move on, because I know you the fun fact guru, were you able to dig up any information? Were you able to use your resources and find any information? I would be surprised. Fun fact. Oh, shit. Does it again. It actually relates to the song itself, so we should actually introduce the song that we're talking about. All right, so let's get into the song, because he sent us two songs. So like I said, he's an artist submission. Um, He sent us two songs, Nwoye Carter, that's Mm -hmm. N-W-O-Y-E. The first song was uh, gay, G.A.Y. It was an acronym. I'm not sure what it was for. Right. Um, But we decided to review the second song, which was Girls. Girls. Um... So that joint dropped in February, February 16th. Um, his latest single, I'm not sure if he's putting out an EP or a whole project coming out. Like I said, I couldn't find much information on him. Yeah. Um, but that's this joint that we're going to review now. So wh- what was your, what was the fun fact you had about Girls? The song we're reviewing is Girls, mm-hmm. and he has an animated short for it on his YouTube. Oh, shit. Except for the fact that the... The animated short doesn't really do much to connect with the actual song itself. I'm actually quite confused about this song. So it it, it put more mystique to the whole. Yes. It didn't really oh, clear. Yeah. It didn't explain anything. It didn't have any branding. It didn't have any kind of story. Hmm. It's just random uh, pictures that you just look like you could do that on uh, Adobe and you just make a video out of it. And Ominous. It was real. It was a, you're kind of an enigma right now. Okay. Boyer. Well, well, that's kind of what we got from him so far. Um, once we listen to this project, well, this single, mm-hmm. I gave it aloud. You gave it aloud. I gave it aloud. I like this joint. I gave it a 65% loud. Um, it gave me that do wop feel. As soon as I heard those keys come in, that do 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 do, it's like, all right, I see where we're going. That's the typical joint. Mm-hmm. I get it. It put me in that Solange bag. Remember her first project when she dropped that do wop album? She had yeah, do wop yeah. all over I it. it kind of, yeah, that was my that. shit. I fuck with that project, and it kind of put me right back there. So okay. it was there, and then. The overall quality of the mix, the vocals, the mix, the master, however he blended and got this done, wherever studio he recorded at, listening to some other, like comparing it to other music that we get and listen to, it was right, really right. well recorded. It just sound good overall. Like aside from what he's saying, just the sound of the music itself sounded really well. So I definitely gave him a lot of points for that. Um, that sample that they had in there, I don't know who that is, but that soul screaming like, Angry scream singing sample that I don't know. that shit is hard. I loved the use of that yeah. sample with that yeah. beat, and the beat was kind of simple. It was airy. It was kind of boppy and light. It gave you like you know feel good vibes. It was definitely a fun listen. It was a fun song to listen to. Um, his his vocal tone and like the performance was really dope. I fuck with that. Um. I wasn't a hundred percent clear, like what, like we said, we didn't find much information on him, so I didn't know. Especially from the lyrics, I was even more confused. It sounded like he he getting at the shorties, like he's trying to get at the ladies. So I don't know if he's bi, if he's you know whatever, whatever. And, and well, yeah, you got you got answers. You know, we need answers. You got we got questions. We need answers. So holla at us, but. I fuck with the song. I thought it was dope. I thought it was well done. I thought it was well executed. Um, the 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 songwriting was was well done. I like the the catchy little breakdown of bridges. You know, the girl you gotta love her better. Cause if you don't, someone will love her better. Yo, he up here, his eyes is in the back of his skull. Like for the people that's listening and not watching, mm-hmm. Peasy is not fucking with him. So you got some answers to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got a lot to make up for. But I'm gonna hand over the floor because I gave it a loud and he clearly don't agree. Oh. So let me just see what he think. What did you think of the joke? Go ahead. Do you like the song, Earth Tone? I fucks with it. I thought it was dope. <laughs> Yeah, you like the song, man. Well, I don't oh, <laughs> like the song. Wow. I don't like it at all. all. Cause okay. All right, what did you give it? What did you give it? I gave it a Reggie. I heard I felt the Reggie coming. Twenty five percent. I felt the Reggie the 25 coming. Twenty five Reginald. Okay, that's fair. That's clearly fair. he's talented. Okay. He can sing. 
he needs to write better songs. Mm, mm. Or find a way to make it connect. Because yeah. I didn't feel, like you said, you didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. Like, who's, whose girl are you talking yeah. about? The, the, a girl you're interested in? Yeah. Somebody else's girl? Why are you worried about somebody else's yeah. girl? Is it because you want to? Yeah. What's happening? Like, I'm kind of confused. Like, yeah, yeah. And given the fact that, like, we have to research it, and so we're coming from a different perspective already. So there's no story with you. Like, we don't know who you are. What you what you identify as? Do you identify as anything? We don't know anything Good about points. you. It kind of helps to bring things together when there's something we can read about you, even if it was just a paragraph. Good points. Good so those points. are the things that I that that kind of affected my decision. And even the production part, like when you have that screaming sample, Kanye would do that a lot, but mm. it's, it makes sense with what he's expressing yeah. in the song, and it makes sense with the feel of the song. Like I still don't really know there's what she con- was saying. It just yeah. sounded good. So it, it rocked just with sounded. It. But it you got to really, do more than sound really good. You can't just be arbitrary and throw sound together you're right like whoever your producer is or if you produced it like you have to be real i mean okay i can't say do anything because you know you don't know what works anything could work but for me doing that that kind of production when it's kind of confusing and doesn't really do anything for the song and it distracts that's kind of points off for me that's where i'm coming from but all all in all you have a good voice reginald and you you can clearly carry a tune you might need some help with the songwriting. Okay. And we might need to get a story from you to kind of fun- wonder why what you're making a song like this. Okay. That helps. Well, there we have it, man. Peasy. Reginald James. There it is. Two in one episode. That's two? That's what oh, I'm shit. I wouldn't even count. Yeah, look at you. Look I at wouldn't you. even count. You're giving out Reggie's. But that's what's up, man. I get it. <laughs> Reginald James, I gave it aloud. I kind of think it falls somewhere in between. I think you being a little harsh on him, and I think I'm being a little lean, and I think he might be like somewhere in the mid-range, all in all. But that's our opinion. What the fuck do y'all think? Go check this shit out if you can find him. In Woye, N-W-O-Y-E Carter. That's another thing. Like, well, I don't know. Holla at me. Hit us up. I don't know if it if you weren't able to get it on title, but I live on title, so I didn't yeah. find the That's song. That's another thing. It wasn't on title. It's definitely yeah. on Spotify. It's on Spotify. I think Spotify, you saw it on title saw, at one point. I thought I did, but well, maybe it's you not did. Maybe, it maybe I was... On you. But I definitely saw it on YouTube, and that's where I heard it. So. Well, it is what it is. And Woye Carter, shout out to you. Thanks Thank you for the for submission. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But exactly. Yeah. Get 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 a bio up there. Yeah, yeah. And get an IG or something. Let us know. But listen, email, I hit you on your inbox. So check your inbox. He has an IG. It just um it is what it is. We could yeah. I couldn't find it. On yeah. to the next. Who yeah, we got yeah. next? So that that wraps right. up our Q plus artists that does. for episode seven that on the Herbal Team Podcast with your boy Earth Tone and Peasy. Yeah. Who do we have for the ally of the day? The ally of the day. Oh, shit. Can we get a drum roll? Is this me? Am I bringing this one in? No, I'm oh. bringing this one in. Oh, wait, you who's just, the ally? I'm bringing, I'm going to tell you. The ally oh, is... I'm bringing, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to let you know. Stop stealing your spotlight. Hold, up, hold my your bad, horses. My this is my show, my birthday, hello. Go ahead. I'm doing this my way. Okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. I know, typical Aries. Anyway. Um, wait, go ahead. Nicholas... Menagerie. <laughs> Excuse me. Nicki Minaj is the ally Don't of the, the queen. day. Don't disrespect the queen. I'm not going to disrespect the queen. All these bitches, <laughs> well, these bitches is my sons. Nicki Minaj is our ally of the day. Okay. Nicki Minaj. That's I a big ally. It is a big ally. And we're going to get into it. We're definitely going to get into it. We're going to get into you know it all right, right now. All right. So she's a Trinidadian born. You guys know who she is, but I'm going give, to give you a little primer for those watching that may not. She's a Trinidadian-born, Queensbred rapper, singer, and songwriter, and also actress and model and business owner. Mm. Multi-hyphenate. Mm. She's got businesses on businesses, connects all over the place. Mm. And, you know, she's been around since about 2007. She put out three mixtapes. She blew up off the strength of Pink Friday, her monster verse on Kanye. She's become a multi-platinum Worldwide global phenomenon. You know her endless, for her wacky endless, wigs endless. and her animated presence, endless, endless. her endless flows, her albums. She's released her fourth album, Queen, in 2018. That was the last album we got. She's now married to uh, Mr. Kenneth Petty. And so now she's Mrs. Petty. Mrs. Petty. She's Mrs. Petty Mrs. now. Mrs. Petty with the P. Right. And so she had, and she's an ally 
because she had made an appearance as a guest judge on the premiere of the 12th season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Hey, look at that. And it elevates her alliance with the LGBT community, which she had pretty much throughout most of her career. Um, But except that when you're a major artist and at the time that she came in, it wasn't really a LGBT friendly kind of business. Mm. So you can tell like her and you know, a few other artists who kind of claim allegiance to LGBT, they had to tone that down. Mm. So she kind of had to deal with that. And, you know, she might not be the most forthcoming as an ally, but her appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race kind of changes mm-hmm. some things. And now she's around and, you know, we could definitely accept her as an ally. Well, that's kind of the thing with the whole ally and alliance to, you know, the Q Plus community. It, we got to give people room to change and evolve and True. progress and grow. Exactly. You know, like some people don't always start there. They might start on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, but if you show enough times that you're willing to learn and, you know, accept us, accept and the area, hear ways the stories, and open your mind a little yeah. bit, and figure it out, and learn, and embrace and the culture. Then that's cool too. But we love you know, it. It is what it is. But it's a bit of a controversy with Nicki Minaj. It because is. I was looking up, and I'm like, all right. I remember, and I forgot this, but I remember when she first came in, and she was like, bye. I could. I remember I that too. It, and that was like the way. Oh, and she wasn't denying that at all. She, she was wasn't. She was kind of playing with that whole. I feel like you're leading to right. a fun fact. So it was like, hold up, are you bi or are you not? And then now it comes out, she kind of denying it, like wholeheartedly, like she's saying, like, nah, like it ain't even, it wasn't even ever a thing, like. So that's a little shaky, and I always thought her, not alliance, but. Her affinity or her, her love for the Q plus community was kind of limited, very limited, mm-hmm. based on how much it was going to profit her. Right. I just got that feeling. I don't have yes. no facts. I don't have no evidence to prove that. Those are just the vibes I always got from you know Nicki Minaj, and right. I fucks with her. I like her music. I never was the hugest Nicki Minaj fan. Right. Right. She could spit her ass off. Right. I definitely got nothing but respect for her. But gotcha. I always got that vibe. But yeah. I could be wrong. But. That was just an interesting fact to point out. But she, I would definitely classify her as an ally today, 2020, April. She's definitely an ally. Um, but that was interesting, I thought. Fun fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's more. Yes. Mrs. Petty, in 2010, she was then a fast-rising mixtape rapper, newly signed to Young Money, collaborated with artist Jeffree Star. An openly queer performer on the single Luxury oh, Lollipop Luxury. That. And I did peep that. It I was forgot on about that. it was on some blogs. That was a flash in the pan. Right. Definitely a flash in the pan because the album that was on was the only album he ever put out. He went on to become a fashion designer, I think, interior. Anyway. Um, but at the time, while Edgy signaled Minaj's openness to the dance pop oriented and burgeoning connecting with the LGBT culture. So you kind of can see why, how she, or it makes sense a little bit more, the picture of her going pop. She's kind of been in that bag. Yeah. I mean, so, she know. has a lot of ties to the Q plus community. She's been around for it's, a while. She kind of has that trajectory. And it's tough, especially for women. Like, it's a rocky road. It it's is. not easy. It's really but we just here to bring you out a fact. But enough about that shit. Like, let's get into this let's motherfucking single. Let's get into this song. What did you think? Her song, Yikes, latest single, yeah. February 7th, 2020. It's been buzzing. It's been buzzing. Everybody it's, doing remixes. It's another Lucy. Hopping on a beat. What did you think? What did you give it? I gave it a 20% Regin- Reginald. Oh, shit. Damn. Yo, you giving out the Reggie. Listen, like facts payday. is facts. Here we go. Ain't nobody hating. This is not hate. I said payday. Okay, yes, payday for <laughs> Ain't real. No, hate you good. No, 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 no. This is definitely it's, not hate you. Feel. Let's be clear. Yeah. Let's be clear. You know what I'm saying? The song really does sound like a throwaway to me. Mm. She, you know what I'm saying? She. <sighs> She just, I don't know. It is what it is. She was know, underwhelmed. Not, she wasn't I'm, feeling it. I'm not feeling what the was your? What was the low point? What I, was the low light? Not I don't, the highlight, the low light. I don't think it's better. Like, she's done songs like this many, many times before. She has Hard White on her 
Queen album. Oh it's God. not better than that album. It's not better than that song. It's not better than any of the hardcore shit that she's. Is done that on her fair albums. that we do that though? That we compare artists to the yeah? Because that's shit. that's her luxury. Yeah. That's her that's her legacy. I just hate me. when artists ask that question. It's like yeah, we're gonna compare you to the other shit you yeah, put out. Like what else we gonna put, compare it to? Right, we have to. Like we you gotta you, see. We know the your bar, So this is you want to be known, and you put out this music to tell people that you the queen of rap and all of this business this yike single is not doing it it's kind of like a trendy type beat to me well and that's the, all of it's spawning mad remixes everybody's jumping on everybody is remixes, doing remixes and that's what it sound kind of better than See, that's what I'm saying. Like, the only good thing about the song to me was the, the flow switch. Like, I, I like the flow uh, switch that she uh, did uh, in the uh, second uh, verse. Uh, it was cute. Yeah, yeah. And her flow was never... She never disappoints with her flow. No. She always performs. But... I'm not, I'm not with it. But Reginald, you gave it a Reginald? Reginald 25? Man, Reginald. 20. 20. 20%. 20. 20 She's done far better records than All right. this. All right, man. What you got for us? I gave it a mid. And I'm going to tell you why. I gave it a 55% mid. So. 55. 55% mid. I thought it was very, very underwhelming, especially for Nicki Minaj. But if you give this same song to another girl that's not Nicki Minaj, mm -hmm. you would hear this song a lot different. It's not a bad song. It's a decent song. The beat kind of hard. Like you said, the flow was dope. She caught the switch with the flow. She not really saying anything, though. Especially for Nicki Minaj, who known to be like her punchlines, are, she she yeah. punch her head off punchlines. Yeah, she ain't give me not like really none much. of that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no none. All you bitches, Rosa Parks. Uh oh, get your ass up. I remember the whole controversy around that line, and that's how she hyped the song up. And I'm like, All but right. it wasn't even done that well for you to use the whole Rosa Parks bar, and then you kind of reach to that bag a lot. Like she has a yeah. few of her go to lines, trying to be controversial. She overdo the punch lines, and they kind of. <sighs> If it, it landed flat, and all of the punches on here landed flat. Like, I do not fuck with you niggas. Anything. I own the Clippers. Like we remember that. She didn't, like she, we know this. Yeah. We just you've been doing this before. All right, Nikki. So shout out to you. Thanks for being an ally. <laughs> but we were both underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. At least I was less underwhelmed than Peasy. Peasy gave it a Reggie. I gave it a Reggie. What it is? Um, and that's what it is, man. Yikes! What do y'all think? Go check that shit out. It's out now on all streaming platforms, of course. What do you right. think of the remixes? Are you going to get on a remix? Maybe I should do a remix. You want to get on that I think you shit? probably would get on a kill it on the remix. You do it. Just I'll do body it. body that shit. Drop man. it. You don't want these problems, man. <laughs> but yo, shout out you to Nikki, no our ally of the day. And this is the Herbal Tea Podcast, man. Thank y'all for joining us, man. We, brought, we out here working through the Rona. We appreciate y'all tuning in and fucking with us. Right. Man. Happy April Fool's Day. Happy birthday to my nigga. Peace. Ew. What happened? Uh -uh. All right. All right, man. So, we done got the music. Out of the way. Yeah. Now, you know what we usually do when we listen to the music. We got to see how the people feeling. Let's take it to the motherfucking streets. Let's see what's going on. Let's take it to on. the fucking streets. All right, Even though man. we can't really take it to the street streets, we got to practice our social distancing and all yeah. that. But we yeah. still got to stay tuned then. And I know you always are, so... What you got for us? Niggas are still getting together. Niggas are still making shit happen. Out we here out mixing here. and mingling. We out here mixing and mingling and making shit work. Just fewer numbers. All right. So we just finished talking about this hoe and goddamn <laughs> reviews. So she's back in these streets, oh, of course. Shit. Like I doing? said, who that? She is Nicki Minaj, and she, like I said, was the guest judge for the premiere of season twelve of the Drag Race. So, oh, okay. You know. Anyway, that's what it was. Um. Did you watch it? How did that go? I watched clips of it. It was cute. Mm -hmm. She had she judged um, a performance by all of the drag queens. They all had to do a song called "I'm That Bitch," and they all had to do verses on it. Of course. So you you can imagine what that would sound like. Of course. Drag queens rapping. Yep. As it is. Mm -hmm. So she had to judge, and she had to kind of give her her tea. And part of me just kind of cringes when drag queens rap. But I'm gonna hear it anyway. I wow. didn't see that. That's, you know that's gonna be controversial, right? Oh and well, that's gonna be a bit. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use it as advertisement. I mean, <laughs> do what you gotta do. <laughs> they gonna hate your head. It is what it is. <laughs> like drag queens, when you not, when you don't rap, you gonna sound like you don't rap yeah, all yeah. the time. Nah, I know exactly what you mean. I've yet to hear a drag queen that I can say I enjoyed 
hearing rapping and thought that they were actually skillful at it. Mm-hmm. They're good at the performance part because these bitches are still doing flips and heels. Yeah. They're doing acrobatics. They're doing gymnastics. They're giving you Olympics they're 2024. They're giving you a lot. They give you life on stage, which is why everybody loves them, except for when they rap. And so Nikki had to kind of judge them. And of course, I didn't see the reviews, but I can just only imagine how that went. And that's why it would be uh, uh, an event, because that's not really in their bag. It's to not. They lip sync. Like, yeah, not really out that's here what rapping, they do. So. so they had to lip, lip sync to themselves, I guess, or whatever. But she heard uh, Nicki Minaj. I heard the song, because they posted it on YouTube. And, you know, I was... So they wrote their verses? They wrote their verses. Oh, shit. It's a real song. Oh, shit. It's a real... So go <clears throat> look for it. Drag Queen or Drag Race, season 12, I'm That Bitch. Okay. It's out there. That shit screaming? It's kind of screaming. It's kind of giving a little bit. But like I said, when you hear Drag Queen's rap, you tell me what your opinion is. All right. And all maybe right. you'll give them a pass. You tell me. I wish I could see. Your opinion. Is. Yeah. I wish I could see what her actual reactions were. But, you know, it's cool that she was actually on the show. That is dope. Because that's pretty big. They've been give getting her props like bigger and bigger guests, hosts. Yeah. And that's dope to RuPaul's see. RuPaul's so. not playing out here. Shout like, out to her. Queen. That's just another sign of her being an alliance. I forgot to mention that she actually. She was supposed to do that Saudi Arabia festival a couple years back. Right, I remember. And she pulled out. Like, a lot of artists didn't. They went forward with it because you know how they Because the bag know, is serious. Against women yeah. and the LGBTQ community. Oh, yeah. Like, they don't fuck around out there. Yeah. They don't fuck with us and they let it be known. But a lot of artists went forward with the festival, right. took that bag. But Nicki Minaj was like, nah, fuck that. I ain't, I ain't gonna um, do it. And then she, she, you know, she didn't have to do it. So that was that was big up. Yeah, big up to her. Yeah. And big up her, her appearance on RuPaul's. Another contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race, you might be familiar with this one, Sherry Pie, oh, came into shit. some controversy, of yes. course, with the that was very... harassment of her just being a creep. Yeah, him. pretty much. That's basically what it was. Pretty him much. Being That's Because I was confused as to what happened at first. Like they was like catfishing, so I'm like, okay, so she showed up as Sherry Pie when she was on the app as a dude, and they thought they was getting a dude, or like what happened? Like what? What? But so, no. All it, right. It so was different. let me fill you in. Yeah. She's now a former cast member. She's been disqualified after seven men. Uh, they. Wait, has that happened before? Has anybody ever been like disqualified from the? Not that I know. Like of. other than like an injury, not for something you know, not injury, but just being disqualified. Not for something like, like this. Totally cut her out. But of course, they filmed most of the season already, so she's in most of the episodes. They have to try to figure mm, out. So she's still on the season. She's still. Much. You're gonna see her in future episodes. Wow. So That's it's just crazy. that, and it's nothing they once, can do about that. Once they found that out, that she wasn't obviously able to complete the rest of the season or win for that matter. But, you know, she, let me see, she's been accused of the accusations of the sexual misconduct and predatory catfishing. That's what she was found guilty of. Sexually suggestive fetish videos to in exchange for follow through on acting job offers. A lot of the kids Um. that she was, a lot of the kids that she was doing this with were people she actually went to school with. Damn. She went to like, like some kind of acting academy, I think, what is it? Um, I didn't get the name of the acting academy, but they kind of went to the same, they went in the same program together. So she was basically faking with these guys and convincing them to, you know, do nasty lewd, shit, lewd, lewd shit, lewd acts <laughs> in hopes of giving these guys getting but, future roles and pretending to be a booking agent and whatnot. It was So they was messy. doing the shit though? Like they was doing they the acts it. and sending her the they shit? They were sending thinking her that, like, the stuff. Like, all right, if I do this, yeah, you know, she Yeah, because she really, and then- I don't know how I feel about that. He, he kind of impersonated somebody. Like she made, he made up a name of somebody and just made this whole lie up that this is the person that was going to get them more gigs if you what? do these things. And I was like, that's, that's like a so out the way. I know. Go. And then you lot. already kind of got a name. Like you Sherry Pie, so you kind of right. popping in the streets a little bit. A like, little bit. Maybe this is before we saw her because I remember we did go see. Well, her when we Albatross. met her, she was kind of like she was doing cool. her thing. Like she yeah, was she was here. doing she her thing. She had just performed. And when mad heard, sociable, mad cool. This yeah. is before social distancing, so it was right, cool. Right. We were still in the bars. Shout out to Albatross. Shout out to Albatross out here in the uh, in Queens. Astoria, yeah, Queens, Astoria. Right? So like 
That's crazy. And that cool wasn't that, that long ago. That was like what a couple, not, a not even two a year and a half ago, Damn. something like that. But he was mad cool, and it was a good show. Like it was a funny show. That sucks. But that's so just, he just got disqualified. It wasn't like any charges brought up or jail time or nothing like that, was it? Um, not yet. There's, I don't think there's any. Senate, the court date for hasn't uh, hasn't been released yet, or mm. there's not really that much information on how this is going forward. But he is claim, claiming. Uh, Claiming what he did and he apologized for it on Facebook and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, I saw that. But I mean, it's still like the damage is done. Whatever yeah. happens to you, good luck to you. But yeah, I just thought that sucks. was real Especially crazy. Especially you ruined the time and you ruined the opportunity like uh, that. For it's yourself, because now you'll never, now you'll never be for what? Like a couple nasty videos, like you could have. You're never. You're like your your name as a drag queen is done. Like Sherry Pa is gonna be totally associated with this this controversy from now on. You'll that never sucks. get booked for anything. How do you feel about yourself? Did you get what you wanted? Light bulb. All right. So next thing on the docket. What up? What up? Season four of The Circle oh, NYC shit, is, is, is back. fucking back. It's back. And um, we remember season three because the guy sitting right next I mean, to me was kind of I mean, in it. I mean, Shout out to Nunu. Shout out to all the cast Shout members. Shout out to your boy Nunu, the kid. Shout out to all the cast members, even the ones that still have me blocked on Insta fucking oh, Gram. Shit. I'm Who not going to call that name oh, out. Call the name Melly out. B. I, I, oh, I mean, shit. I'm just saying Melvin. Oh, <laughs> Melvin. So, you know, this episode, the first episode kind of. What did you think? What did you think? Debut episode. Give us your take. What you <laughs> rated? Mid, it's fire mid. loud. It it's, was mid. It's mid. It mid. It's oh, mid. Shit. There were some high points, but this was mostly mid because all we saw was Melly B on the Old Town Road again. It was a lot of Old Town Riding Road. Riding his whole. I got to admit, though, it was very no scenic. That shit looked good. I was like, damn, did Nuno get a new camera? Like, that shit looks pretty good. You went all the way out to Atlanta to film this nigga, but first that, of that all. That was all it was, though. God. Was man, horse riding. But yeah. it was a good intro joint. He like, for like, him, he had the biggest intro. Yeah. But everybody else kind of, it all just kind of boiled down to the what, what they doing, a fundraiser yeah. or a PSA. For the PSA, that was I mean, the it was light. But it was a, I felt like it was another teaser. It was like an extended teaser. I wonder what's going to happen with this, because I was there when they... Filmed the PSA. I was part of the mm-hmm. PSA, and as we know, World AIDS Day has passed last year. That was a while ago. Maybe it's for this year. Maybe it's for 2020. We don't know. So we'll see on this show what happens. Oh, yeah, because they definitely didn't do no. Well, we can't. We can't. We'll see what happens. We gotta find. We'll out see what happens. happens. Well, I don't have any spoilers for y'all. There's no spoilers. We're just but telling it's you out there. If you haven't seen it, go support it. And Circle. all the acts of the day, like the cast look pretty lit. Like they look like they got a lot of personality. It's a nice mix. It's, it's a, a nice, nice mix. mix. Chavis is back. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm checking for Cleon. Oh, <laughs> as everybody else. I'm, are, are they? Are everybody. They? All right, I'm not. Him. Never mind. I'm everybody off that band wagon. Him. Off the. But I'm also really, really checking for one of our own. Uh oh, Mr. B Hood. None other. None other. Bad boss. You know what I'm saying? Hood bad boss. Yeah. You already know what it is. He got some shit on the way. He I want to see. He just dropped his single, I, uh, I've Been That, mm-hmm. produced by on. The Real Peasy. Go check that out. Stream it. Go all stream platforms. it. Check that shit out. That's the first single off the project, That's right? the first single off his next project, Hood Booger. Kid is out here. You know what I'm saying? So we don't know it. if Hood Booger is going to be the official title. Yeah, but he's still fine tuning it. He's still it. trying Speaking to fine tune it, but he definitely got the cover. He got music. The, the album got the done. cover. Remember the cover? Yes. I remember the cover. So, yeah. I can't wait. But if we had the screen, I would totally show you the cover. I love the cover. It's going to be hard, though. <laughs> Shout out to Billy Hood. Shout out to Hood. And um, that's where we at with uh, the Circle Season 4. Your boy Nunu is back again, and he hitting us with the real, real on the Circle. All right. So, so go the, check that out. Circle Season 4 on YouTube. Check that out. And also go check out the homie Billy Hood. And, you know, um, we're going to end these streets by, you know, the obvious, kind of the elephant in the room, the whole COVID-19 situation. Oh, kind of explains why we're here, we're at Earth Tones Crib, filming. Speaking of COVID, man, Everything. I got to release my... Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm not going to get too deep into it. You guys are living it. We're still fucking living it. So this is what we got right now. Living it. And, you know... Everybody's on lockdown and social distancing is happening, and this is kind of going to be a life changing thing. You know what I so wonder about? Just be about, prepared for anything. I wonder about like the people who can't shelter in place, like you know homeless what I'm saying? people, like the people who homeless who like don't really got a stable 
home to go to. Like, yeah. family ain't really fucking with them. They might be here. They might be there. <sighs> they don't really know where to go. Yeah. They don't know how long they're going to be able to stay wherever they at now. Right. It's a lot going on, man. It's crazy. It's totally a lot. So I'm just thankful. Like, it's it's fucked up and it's, it's uncomfortable and it's weird, but like, I feel blessed and lucky. Like, it could be a lot worse. You it know could I mean? be a lot worse. The fact that we're still here able to do this, you know, it's, I like it. I'm, I'm kind of thankful we for that. We made it happen. And each, each day, like, it's different. And each day, I just be like, I'm thankful just to be here. I'm thankful for what I have right now. And, you know, just take it day by day. That's all I've been doing is just one day, all right, this is what we're going to tackle. I'm going to write a song today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just chill today, watch a documentary or watch On Demand or some shit, work on this podcast day by day. That's all keep we could do. Busy. Until keep the mind busy. Keep, keep the, the mind people. busy. And it really helps. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Light up your sage or light up your Palo Santo or whatever the fuck you got to do. Yeah. Because I'll be doing it. Load up on your vitamin C, your L elderberry, your sea moss, all of that. Whatever it is. Get it in. Do your you tea. get it in. Get it in. And we still here for y'all. And that's just really all there is to it. Do remember, every first and third Thursday of the month, Herbal Tea Podcast with your boy Earth Tone and Peasy. Bringing it to you live. Bra -da -da -da. You already flex, flex along. Yo, that was a crazy drop right there. We Remix. Bring it back, Selector. We might need Rewind. to see if we can make those sound effects. Rewind. Like Rewind. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so that's what's going on in the streets, man. We got whew, a lot going on. Yeah. A lot going on. COVID. A lot going on. Uh, the Circle. Uh, B Hood. It's a lot out here in these streets, man. It's a lot. Hey, but y'all be careful out there and be safe, man. It's always interesting. Every day is different in these First streets. First and foremost, man. Hey, but that's life. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. But you know when it get a little too crazy, the best thing you could do is take it to the smoking section. Take it man. to the smoking real, section. For real. Like, this da, is probably da, da, the most da. vital time. This is essential right now. You talk about like essentials, things that got to be open because it's still essential. Right, right. This is an essential resource. This is. So the smoking section is essential right now. And that's where we at. So we about to have another smoking session, session in, in the, the smoking, smoking section. section. Yes. I look forward to this yes. every time. Yes, we here. And we already here. So we didn't even have to do the... We didn't have to switch all up because guess what? We're already out here, man. Woof. Set What's change. going on with y'all, man? Y'all still with us? Y'all rocking with us? I hope so. You know what I'm saying? You got your herbals. You got your piece. You got your pipe. You got your blunt. Whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Whatever your vessel of choice. We hope you got it. And we glad y'all tuned in with us. Thanks again for rocking with the kid, Earth Tone and Peasy. This is the Herbal Tea Podcast. Man. Damn. You know. And it's still my birthday show. This is So what kind birthday. of gifts do you bring forth? To a king like me. Well, I mean, we already blessed with so much as it is. You true, know what I'm saying? True. You the drip is already live. You know what I'm saying? But we could always use a little bit more. So All right. we got some uh wedding cake, which is what we smoking right now, wrapped in none other than a Dutch vanilla cigarello. Dog. Um, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we enjoying right now. It kind of got me in my bag. I don't know if you noticed. I've definitely noticed. You know what I'm saying? But I'm definitely in my zone, in my vibe. Yeah. It's April. I love the springtime. It's one of my favorite seasons of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. Shout out to yeah. you. It's your birthday, Cam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another year on this earth, 365. Another year, 365. You know what I'm saying? You've seen another one. I've seen another one. A lot of people one. can't say that, man. We've been losing people, people left and right. It's crazy out here. You're right. They ain't make it. They ain't yeah, make it this man. far. I'm totally blessed to be here. And in case you're wondering, I'm 35. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. Like, don't crack, man. We out here, man. Don't crack. We out here. Still here. Just getting better with time. Fine like wine. Grown kings. Big game. Get with it. All right. So the Herbal Tea Podcast, we in the smoking section. And you know once we get up in here, we always curious. You know what I'm saying? We get inquisitive when we get in the smoking section. Because you know you hit the L. You start thinking. You get in your zone. You be like, damn. Yeah. I wonder what. So what I was wondering is, what is a marijuana strain? What's a strain of weed? What I know it? you've heard of it mm -hmm. before, but people don't necessarily know exactly what it is. So I did a little bit of research, and I'm going to break it down for you guys today. So check it out. Kick your feet up. 
You know what I'm saying? Hit the L like Cook I'm about up to your do. shoes, relax your feet, party on down with the herbal tea beat. Just, just kick, kick it. it. Just kick it. Just that hit right. That's the joint. <laughs> so, what is a marijuana strain? So a strain is pretty much like a a, a breed. So you got the marijuana plant. And a plant has different breeds. Like you got breeds of dogs. Right. Um, and then you can, you know, you can breed the plant depending on what you're trying to get, you know, a specific outcome. Right. Um, so I kind of compared it to like citrus. So marijuana is the citrus. And then you got oranges, you got tangerines, you got lemons, limes, limes nectarines. You know what I'm saying? Nectarines. You got different types of citrus, so but they're all in the same family. It's all, you know, it's all... Citrus. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah but dope, they dope. broke it down into three categories. Mm-hmm. So you got three different categories of strains. And you got your indicas, your sativas, and then your hybrids. So those are pretty much, everybody kind of knows those terms, especially if you smoke from your amateurs to your vets. Mm-hmm. Everybody has come across that term in some way, shape, or form, like your indicas, your mids, your, uh, your sativas, and your hybrids. So the indicas, those... They pretty much broken down by the effect that they generally have on the smoker. Right. So the indica is more of a relaxing effect. That's like more like the body high, they say. Um, and that's going to put you in the couch. That's why they say like indica is in the couch. That's kind of your way to differentiate it when it's being presented to you. And Boy. then you got your sativa, which is more on the opposite spectrum. It's more of an energizing effect. That's mm-hmm. like your head high. Like, get you buzzed. You feel light a little bit more. Heads high. You know what I'm saying? You want to move around. You want to work. Dinner. Yeah. And then you got your hybrids, which is kind of the best of both worlds. Welcome to the best of both worlds. Right. So you're like bisexual, so you can't yeah, decide which yeah. one. Yeah, you dibble and dabble. Like you dibble and dabble. And that's when Facts. the scientists start getting crazy with the little mixtures <laughs> okay. and shit. But, um, so that's that's the three different categories. So within those, you have different strains. So you got different strains of indicas, you got different, you know, sativa strains, or you got different hybrid strains. Okay, okay. So a lot of strains, some are more popular than others. Um, you know, you got your OG Kushes, your Purple Haze, White Widow, shit like that. We got Moon Rock, which is another crazy one. But these are all popular strains that most people, if, you know, you're not living under a rock and you smoke, you've come across or you at least heard about these uh, strains. Um, But I actually did some research and I checked out a website called healthline.com and they broke down the strains according to like benefits. Mm -hmm. So they took like, all right, if you want to be energized, you're looking for, you know, different strains that want to give you energy, give you that buzz. Um, They got Sour Diesel, Maui Wowie, which we all heard of Maui Wowie. That's hard. White Widow. Mm -hmm. I actually had White Widow before and I had Sour Diesel. And then Pineapple Express, which I thought was dope. They kind of broke it down like that. So they broke it down oh. between like the different benefits. They grouped it in the benefit categories. Pineapple Express is like the movie. Exactly. Oh, my nigga. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a real strain. Like, it's out here. So the next uh, benefit they broke down was like relaxing and sleep aids. Mm-hmm. So those include uh, Fruity Pebbles, Bubba Kush, oh. Blue Dream, and LA Confidential. And of course, those are all like indicas. Those are like, you know, the relaxing and the, and the couch joints. Yeah. Um, and then they broke down uh pain. So if you need pain relief, they listed uh Northern Lights, Super Silver Haze, Sour Diesel, and Bubba Kush. And we familiar with Bubba Kush. We just reviewed we just reviewed you know, that nigga album. Q plus artist. First Moon Rock. Based on the strain. You know, and it's built for pain. Speaking of Moon Rock, is what is Moon Rock considered? Moon Rock would definitely be a hybrid. Like that's some other shit. Like all of those, the crazy strains that you hear, those mm. are usually like formulated. Like they blended like two or three different plants or some shit like that. Like I don't know exactly the science that goes into the strain, which that's gonna be another topic. So they're like genetically modified. Yeah, and shit like that. most of general. most of the crazy ones are genetically modified. All but right, all right, all right. But um, yeah, Moon Rock would definitely be a hybrid. Um, but then like the last uh, benefit that they broke down was, which I thought was interesting, they listed one for creativity. Um, and they listed Maui Waui, which was also listed for energy. Um, mm. A strain called Golden Goat and White Widow. Oh, I don't think I've had any of those. Which White Widow was also for energizing. So White Widow and Maui Waui might be two 
that I need to seek out. Energizing mm-hmm. and creativity uh, okay. benefits. We got so the, that's pretty dope. We got the sour diesel right here. We got the sour diesel right there, right man. Here. We out here. So you know what I'm saying? there and you have it. We broke down the cake. different strains. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty much like we said, it's like a different breed of marijuana. So the different kind of breeds. And depending on the strain you're smoking, you might have a different effect. And I also saw somewhere where scientists did a study and they were saying like, the indica, the sativa, the, the sativa, the hybrid, those categories might not have as much significance as we once thought just because different people have different effects to weed. So you might get an indica and it puts you in the couch, but I might hit it and be like, you oh, this shit got me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It, it depends. it's a case-by-case basis, but it just gives you a general idea of the percentage. So more likely you're going to have you know, that effect. Depending on these categories, but it's a great marketing thing. It definitely is, but I I noticed that myself. Like a lot of the times, like I smoke weed and I really can't tell the difference between too many different strains, especially yeah. when I'm smoking back to back and I'm like going in. Yeah, it's hard for me to really tell the difference, so I don't really be tripping. I'm be like, I'm just trying to smoke. Like with the weed, at? I know it what ain't no dirt. Long it ain't no dirt. No, as long no as it's not dirt or veggie. You know what I'm saying we we could live. So. Azealia. But there you have it, My man. Bad. That's that's the smoker section. So hold on, hold on. Uh you heard of Leafly? Yes. The app Leafly. Yes, yes. The website. They're big. Actually, that's I got some of the information from here. Okay. I checked them out too. Yeah. They they they're a big site for uh information on marijuana. Okay. All right. Yeah, a lot of fun facts. So- and they do like a lot of lists and shit. Like they like a BuzzFeed almost, but but like we, they do like a lot of list and all of that shit. So they are popping. They did like the blood. top hundred strains you have to try before you die. But I didn't want to go into that because that's just a whole nother <laughs> whole rabbit hole. You should definitely check that out. Leafly dot com. L e f y l y. No, L e a f l y dot l y. No, just L e a f l y for the app. For the app, okay. Yeah, thought... yeah. But you could you could Google them on. Search the app like that. But yeah, they definitely a good resource for uh, marijuana facts. Um, but yeah, man, there you have it. That's another smoking session in the smoking section. And mm-hmm. like we always like to do, you know, at this time, we're going to end it on a high note. Let's, on let's, the get, high that, note. let's get that piece fired up real quick. Let's get man. this fired. We're going to do this for my B-Day one time. You know what I mean? You might as well. You might as well. You know what I'm I mean, I did bring our apparatus Why not, man? from we a couple of working episodes through Rona. back. Treat yourself. Listen, don't you know cheat saying? yourself. Treat, treat yourself. yourself. Let's get it. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to the Herbal Tea Podcast with your boy, Herb Tone. Hey, your man, PZ. Hey. Birthday boy, M. Let's get it. Don't you know that from coast to coast, what is dope? This hope, what is dope? This hope. Sheesh. Wait. Is it lit?